So we've been working with text and we've been working with effects. Let's bring these two concepts together and I want to just show you some cool sorts of effects that you can apply to text and this can really help you to make some special titles for your projects or just any sort of special text treatment. This is just to get you started. They're just some ideas. Obviously, you can modify these in any way and get super creative with the way in which you treat text within your projects. The first text effect is I'm just going to do something simple where I'm going to reveal my text from nowhere. Using my Essential Graphics tab, I'm going to just go ahead and add some text. And we'll go ahead and we'll increase the size of our text. For all these examples, I am going to be using fairly large text so that we can really see the effect in action. And I want to center the text both vertically and horizontally. If the text element is selected, we can simply click the vertical center and the horizontal center. And then I'm just going to nudge this up a little bit so it's kind of sitting over the image of the shark. In addition, I will stretch the text element out so it matches the same duration as the underlying still image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an effect. So I'm going to open up my effect pane and in our effect pane, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a roughen edge effect. So I'll search for roughen edge. I'm going to apply this to my text layer. And once I've done that, I will look in my effect controls and this is where I can modify this particular effect. So we're going to make sure that our playback head is at the beginning of the sequence. We're going to increase the border all the way up to 500. I'm going to turn on keyframing because we want to keyframe this. So this is going to be at frame one. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to move our playback head out. So I'll type three period to move it out about three seconds and I'm going to reduce this value down to zero. If we go ahead and rewind and play, you'll see how the text is going to kind of like fade in and become more apparent as we add this particular effect. So this actually creates kind of a cool little reveal where the text is simply going to show up onto our screen like so. Let's move on to our second clip. I'm going to park my playback head there. We'll go ahead and add some text. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and center the text to the horizontal and vertical centers of my screen. We'll stretch the text out and now we're going to add a different effect. So we're going to search for the 3D effect. So I'm just going to search for basic 3D. I'll apply this to the particular text element that I want to affect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to animate our tilt effect. You can also do something similar using swivel, but I'll use tilt for this example. I'll use my playback head and I'll just move out in time. So currently I'm about 13 seconds. I'm going to move out to about 17 and 10 frames, so about four seconds out. And what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and we'll make the tilt appear so that it's five times the amount. So you can see as I increase this number, it's going to say one times like 159 degrees or whatever it might be. So I'm just going to simply change this value to say five times, which means that it's going to swivel around five times so you can see it's as if the text was on a horizontal type of line and it's just rolling around that particular line. In order to make this look a little bit better I'm going to twirl open tilt which is going to give us access to the actual keyframes and what we're going to do here is we're going to adjust the keyframes you'll see that there's little handles on these keyframes and if we grab these and adjust them we can adjust the kind of shape of the the path right here and by adjusting this we're going to be able to control the easing these little keyframes right here are going to allow us to augment our easing and so obviously there's a lot of different things you can do here but i'm going to drag the top handle kind of up so i get more of a rounded corner and that's just going to make this play 
so that it's a little bit smoother. It's going to make it kind of start fast and then it'll get slower. So you can see it flips really quickly and then it kind of slows down as it gets to the end, which is the effect that I wanted. In addition to adding this effect, I'm also going to add a blur effect. So I'll go ahead and search for my blur and we have a lot of blur. I'm going to use my directional blur. So I'll drag this on top of the shape again. And here is my directional blur. And I'm just going to go ahead and follow these same keyframes. So we'll move into our keyframes and we'll set a keyframe for blur length at four seconds in. And then I'm going to move to the beginning and we're just going to increase the blur a little bit. Now, currently my blur is up and down, and since this is swiveling up and down, that kind of makes sense. So let's just play this now, and you'll see it kind of like rotates in, and then as it slows down, the blur is going to disappear. So that's kind of a cool little rolling type of effect that you can apply to your elements. The next area in my project is just a blue mat. So I'm going to use this as a background. I just created a mat and I selected a blue color. We're going to add some text here and I'll go ahead and type. I'm going to center my text. And for this particular example, I want my text to be really large. We're going to actually be creating a mask. So what I'll do here is I'll come into the effect pane. I'm going to open up the text. And if we scroll down here, we can adjust scaling. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale this up quite a bit. Let's scale it up maybe 200% and I'll center this. And clearly this was a little too excessive. So let me drop this down. Maybe we'll try 160. So now that I have the text in place, let's go ahead and let's create the mask. In our essential graphics, I'm going to come to this new layer icon and we're going to choose from file. And now I can browse my computer and I can choose any sort of still image. If we go ahead and grab one of these images right here and click import, you'll see that it's going to import this file. And here is my dolphin image. Here is the text underneath in order for this to work. I'm going to want to make sure that the background element is underneath the text. And then with the text selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use mask with text. And when we do that, the image is only going to show up within the text area. And this actually works really well with video because you get a little bit of movement. So let's go ahead and let's try that. I'm going to select my text layer and we'll go ahead and we'll just delete the dolphins. And then I'm going to click new item from file. And I'm just going to grab one of these fish images right here. It's going to place the fish onto my screen. And the fish image is, is fairly large. It's larger than my sequence. We'll select this fish element and let's drag this underneath our text. Because we had created the mask before on our text that still exists, you will notice that we can invert it, in which case it would show the video in everywhere except for the text. So we'll just leave this mask with text. I'm going to go into my effect controls and we'll select our fish clip and I'm going to scale this down because my video file is pretty large and I want it to kind of fit within the text. So I'm just going to scale it down. And now if we go to the beginning of this clip and hit play, you'll see that the video is going to play and it's only going to show where the text is. So this is kind of a cool effect where you can go ahead and create a mask. One of the cool things that you can do with this is you can create a little bit of movement. So if we go to our text layer and if we go ahead and scroll down and we set a keyframe for scaling, I'm going to turn that on and then I'm going to move my playback head about three seconds out. Instead of trying to figure out the math, you can just write plus three period and that's going to advance the playback head by three seconds. And we're going to go ahead and set another keyframe here. Now we'll move back to the beginning portion of the clip and we're just going to increase the scaling a ton on our text layer. 
um, because I am increasing my scaling, my text is kind of not being positioned where I want it to be. So we'll probably need to do a little adjustments on our position. So let's turn on keyframing for that as well. I'm going to move out to my ending keyframe because we know that the text is in the correct position here. Now we'll move back to the beginning of the clip and we can kind of adjust the position of the text a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of place this somewhat in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. And now if we go ahead and we play this clip in our timeline, you can see that it's scaling and then the video is playing behind the mask as well. And if this is something that I really wanted to incorporate, I like this second segment of the clip a little bit better because it shows some closer versions of the fish. I may need to edit my video. Unfortunately, when you bring your video clip in, you don't have a way to set your in and out points. So you'll want to have created a, a version of your clip that is in the right area. This particular clip starts where I'm not totally loving the beginning part. I like the ending part a little bit better. I think it looks better. But needless to say, this is a lesson about creating text effects. And in this case, we're creating a mask over something. So that could be a cool thing that you can use as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move on to this video clip that I have. So I have a video clip right here. And what we're going to do for this particular clip is we're going to once again create some text. So I'll go ahead and create a text element and let's go ahead and just center this text. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and change what the text says. So I'm just going to triple click to select all of the text and then we'll write sea lions. Let's go ahead and reduce the size of the text a little bit. So I'll go into the text element in my effect controls. I'm going to go to scale. I'm not going to set any keyframes. I'm just going to scale this down by about 25%. And what we're going to do on this example is we're going to reveal the text over time by using a mask, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. So what we'll do is in the text layer, we're going to create a mask. And for this mask, I'm just going to use my free Bezier tool. And I'm just going to draw like a rectangular kind of shape that's going to be a little bit at an angle. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to scale this and have this display our text. And as you can see, my text is already disappeared because the mask is not over the text. So then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll animate the mask path. So I'm going to turn on my mask path. I'm already at the beginning. I'll move my playback head out, but let me extend the text over the entire clip like so. And we'll move our playback head out. Let's just use four seconds out. So I'll type plus four period to get four seconds out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to scale our mask. So I'm going to switch back to my selection tool and let's go ahead and select the mask. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just grab the mask and we'll just stretch it out. So it encompasses the entire bit of text. We'll probably have to grab both of these points right here like so. And now if we go ahead and rewind this and play it, you'll see that the text is going to be revealed. So that mask that we applied to the text, because it's animating the path of the mask, it is going to slowly reveal our text. So this is using masks in a slightly different way than what we did before, but it does create a nice sort of effect on our text when we do something like this. Let's move on to our next clip in the sequence. I'll add another text element to this particular clip and we'll just go ahead and write fish and let's stretch this over the entire duration of our clip. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to create a gradient on the text. So there is no gradient to fill on your text. We have no way to do that by default, but you can do that getting a little creative with one of the effects. So I'm going to come to my effect pane. We're going to search for the ramp effect 
and we'll grab this and bring it over to the text and as you can see we already kind of have a gradient we can control the start of the ramp which is going to kind of move where the gradient sits and the end of the ramp as well we can change the color of the ramp so if we go ahead and get a maybe a yellow or something like that you'll see that this is yellow let's change this second color to be maybe more of a green greenish blue or something so I'll kind of get a darker green and you can see the color is filling my text we have the option to control the horizontal and vertical settings of where the ramp is going to display so as we alter this you can see how it's going to show me more green or less green perhaps and we can do a linear ramp or a radial ramp so this isn't a perfect gradient but you you know with a little bit of finessing you kind of can dial it in we're going to combine this with a couple of other effects so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our text I'm simply going to copy the text and we'll target our V4 track. Looks like everything that we've been making is on V2 and V3 for some reason. We'll target V4 and I'm just going to lock these other two tracks so we don't accidentally create anything on top of those. I'll move this so it exactly lines up. So at this point we're just putting one version of our text right on top of the other. In this upper version, I'm going to remove the ramp effect, so we'll clear that. So just delete it, and if we unlock this, we should still have the ramp on our first bit of text. Let's just verify, yeah, it's there. It's just being obscured by this upper version of text right now. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to use our opacity mask on this upper text layer. So here is my text selected in my timeline. I'll twirl open the text fish and we're going to go ahead and do a similar thing to what we did before where we're just going to create another type of mask. So I'm just going to draw a shape and again the, the type of shape maybe doesn't totally matter. I'll make something that kind of looks like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this across the text and actually let's make this a little thinner so i'll just go ahead and make this shape a little bit thinner we're going to animate this so let's move our playback head back to the beginning i'm going to turn on animation for my mask path we'll move the playback head out to maybe four seconds and we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the mask and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to just stretch this mask across the shape just like we did before but this time we want it traveling completely across this is going to add a little bit of a shine type of effect so if we play the animation now you'll see that the text is going to appear with our gradient and then this is just going to kind of like travel across it and it's going to light up some of these types of shapes in order for this to be a little bit more realistic I'm going to increase my mask feather a little bit and this looks like it's a little slow so I'm going to grab the ending keyframe and just bring this in to maybe like two seconds in or something like that and now if we rewind and play this section you'll see that the little shine is going to kind of travel across the text so you can do something in that vein as well which could be a kind of cool effect to add to your project let's do one more type of effect i'm going to move on to my last clip that i have right here and for this one we're going to just make our text kind of appear from nowhere so once again i'm going to create some new text we'll just go ahead and center the text let's select the text and type fish and for this one we're going to use an effect let me stretch the text so that it encompasses the entire video clip this clip is a little bit longer but that's fine i'll move the playback head to the beginning of the clip i'm going to go to my effect pane and we're going to search for turbulent displace we'll drag this to the text and you can see it's already kind of morphing my text a little bit 
this creates a little bit of a, a morphing type of effect so you can really do some cool things with it and what we're going to do here is with the playback head at the beginning we're going to animate our amount so i'm going to turn on keyframing for the amount and we're going to set the animation to be really large like let's set it to 4000 let's move the playback head out a little bit so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to type plus five period which is going to take me out five seconds we're going to go ahead and we're going to reduce the amount down to zero which is going to be no effect and now if we rewind and play this clip you'll see that the text is going to be off of the stage it's going to kind of morph into itself and then it's going to resolve into the actual text and you can combine this with some other types of effects if i didn't want it to be quite as legible in the beginning if i paired this with a blur type of effect and once again i'm just going to use a directional blur i think so we'll add a blur and then we can go ahead and animate this let's make sure our playback head is at the beginning and we'll go ahead and animate our blur length and we probably will have to do direction as well. I'm going to increase these values to be pretty blurry. So we'll just change the direction and then we'll kind of like make it blurry. They almost look like kind of rays of light. If I want to continue to alter the direction, I can go ahead and do that. So maybe I want them to be completely vertical. I'll go ahead and make this around 180 and then the blur length. I'm gonna move the playback head to the end where our fish is and then we'll go ahead and we'll just change the blur length down to zero and if we rewind this clip and play this you'll see that the text is going to kind of morph into place now i have a red bar here which is an indication that this needs to be rendered so i might need to go ahead and get to the beginning of the clip hit enter or return and let Premiere run through and do its rendering so that we can really see a smooth sort of effect. This looks like it's gonna take just a little bit of time because it's a little bit involved. So I'll just fast forward to the end. And if we go ahead and play this now, let's just play from the clip that we were just working on. You can see what happens with our morphing text. So it kind of comes into place like so. And hopefully this just gave you some ideas of some different types of things that you can do to text in your projects. You can get really creative by stacking on some of the effects and experimenting around with masking and other types of techniques that we've talked about. Enjoy.